Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Battle Card. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Battle Card. Now, Battle Card is the latest game from Postmark Games, and this one in particular is designed by none other than David Thompson and Nils Johansson. And of course, now David Thompson is one of my favorite designers of all time. And so if I sound a little excited or a little biased towards this game, it's uh, directed squarely at David Thompson. He is uh, such a great designer. He provides a lot of excellent solo games for the solo gaming community. And he's just a great all around person, especially in his social media presence. Now I have received nothing to do this tutorial solo playthrough other than this uh, preview with a couple maps. And I'm gonna show you the Malayan campaign. And so check out the Kickstarter link I have in my description. The Kickstarter goes live tomorrow, uh, September 19th. So you'll wanna check it out right away and uh, follow it and see if this is something you wanna back. Now there are gonna be multiple maps uh, provided in the campaign and I've only uh, previewed a couple of them here. But they each provide a, a different scenario with a few different rules to make it more thematic and, and this game is surprisingly thematic. But let's go into setup here, and we're done. <laughs> you just need the two pages here? Oh no, you do need some dice, all right? Now, normally postmark games, you need a pen or a dry erase marker or something. But in this game here, you only need 11 dice. And these dice are gonna serve uh, to represent various things. The red ones here will represent the allied forces. The blue ones here will represent I'm sorry, the red ones will represent the Japanese forces, the blue ones will re represent the allied forces, the black one will be the turn marker, which goes up here, and the yellow one will roll for conflicts. And so you set the dice on the board here in their spaces as shown. So the, uh, the Japanese forces go up here and they're gonna be set to number six. You have one allied unit set to four going in this spot here. And the rest of these are gonna populate on the remaining spots that show a die underneath it. And so let's go ahead and read about this campaign. This is during the Malayan campaign, Japanese forces swiftly overran the British and Commonwealth and allied defenses in Malaya. You take the role of allied forces and must slow the advance of Japanese long enough to organize a retreat to Singapore, a major British stronghold. And so that's gonna be our goal. We're gonna try and get to Singapore. Now our goal is to have a allied die of three or more value in Singapore. That's, that's our goal. And so we're gonna try and accomplish that. Now, let's go over the rules and the map here. For, for one thing, the map is in uh, two different sections here by two different roads. So you have one road here with the solid red line, and then you have another road here with the double red line. And the way your troops are gonna travel are along those lines, they won't cross over. And so keep that in mind. And now each of these regions has a spot for an allied and a Japanese unit. The Japanese unit would go here if it moves down, or here, or here, or here, or here from this side. And so the way the turns work in this game is you're gonna choose on your turn whether to withdraw an allied die. And you can only withdraw one that is with a Japanese unit. So I, in this first turn, I will only be able to withdraw this one or this one. And so when you withdraw a die, you have to re reduce that die by one. So let's say I withdrew this one here. So I reduce it by one. It travels along the road and joins up with this unit. So in joining up, they combine forces. And so you add the two sums together and now I have a five die here. You're only able to move one allied unit per turn. And then we go on to what is called the Japanese advance. And so if a location has a Japanese unit but no allied unit, it's gonna go ahead and advance to the next area where an allied unit is. So this one would join here. Now, if a Japanese unit enters in an area that shows a number in the upper corner, you're gonna add that number to the die to a maximum of six. So in this case here, this one does not increase at all. And then you're gonna go into a battle with each of the, your allied units that are paired off with a Japanese unit. So these two here and those two there, they're gonna battle each other. And you have to decide if you wanna counterattack or defend. Now defend lets you uh, defend against the attack and likely lose less uh, units than if you try to attack as well. 
but in attacking, you're able to actually reduce the Japanese die by uh, whatever amount you attack for. And, it, and the tables show here. So on the tables here, you have your roll value at the top. So one here, two, three, four, and five and six. On the left here, it signifies whether there's a, a decisive advantage for the Japanese with the plus sign there, or just an advantage with the Japanese, or an advantage for the allied or no advantage at all. And the way you determine an advantage is you compare the numbers of the two dice. So in this case here, the six is greater than the five, so the Japanese have an advantage. But if the ratio is three to one, like here, six over two, that's a ratio of three to one, then the Japanese have a decisive advantage. And so they're likely gonna do a lot more damage. So you have to keep that in mind. See, right now in this spot here, even if I defend, I'm gonna lose at least two units because if I roll a one, it's minus three units, but if I roll a two or higher, it's minus two units. So that unit is going to be obliterated. So you really have to decide how you want to uh, affect the game state, and you have to make those decisions that, that work best for you. Now, after you have resolved conflict, then you move on to the air, air support stage, and that's where if you have a unit here in Kuantan, as shown by this little airplane symbol here, you're able to send air support and reduce one of the two Japanese units by one. Now, Japanese units can never be reduced below one, so keep that in mind. And if an allied unit is reduced to below one, then th that die gets removed from the board. And so once you've resolved the air support, then you turn the turn tracker one space and you'll go on to the next turn. All right, and so uh, once again, our goal is to get to Singapore with an allied unit that is three or more, but how we lose is if the turn tracker gets to six or tries to turn past six, or if Endow here is occupied by a Japanese unit and there's no allied unit here. And so the first thing I wanna do is I want to retreat, like I showed you earlier, with this one here. So I reduce this one by one. So we're withdrawing to this location. We're combining into one unit at this location, so now it's a five. Now we move on to the Japanese withdrawal, or sorry, Japanese advance, and they're gonna advance along here and land right here. And now we go into a conflict. And now right now, this one has a decisive advantage. We'll roll for that one first. Since I'm gonna lose uh, my guys no matter what, we're, we're gonna go down fighting. So we're gonna do a counter attack in that space, attacking that one there. And so we definitely want a two or better. See, if I get a one, I'll lose, uh, it'll be a minus three. And so I'll lose that die, but do no damage. But on the counter attack, any of the red spaces here, that indicates how much damage you do to the Japanese. So if I get a two or higher, I'll at least do one point of damage. Now I do wanna point out in this advancement here, we did have a reinforcement, but since it was already at six, it doesn't get reinforced. All right, so we're rolling for the battle in Kota Baru, and let's see what we get. And it's a three. So consulting our table here, it's a minus three to my unit, which destroys the unit, but it's a minus one to their unit. So they're down to a five. And then we're going to defend here. I don't wanna to lose too many units here. And since I don't have advantage, I, I definitely want to uh, yeah, minimize my casualties. So I am going to roll for this one here and uh, the Japanese just have normal advantage. So if I get a two or higher, it'll only be a minus one. And that's what we're hoping for. And it's a four, so that's really good. So I drop down by one and uh, we're doing good. And so now we have the allied air support and I think I wanna reduce this one down by one. And the reason why is when it moves to the next space, it's gonna gain one. And if it, was, if it was at five and it gained one to six, then it would have uh, a decisive advantage here and I don't want it to so I'll reduce it there and then we advance the timer moving up and we start a new turn and we decide which one to withdraw now again you can only withdraw one that is next to a Japanese unit so I can only withdraw this one I could stay and fight if I wanted to but I think I want to withdraw so we reduce it by one sorry <laughs> we reduce it by one and then we combine these units together making it a five and we're set to go here. Now the Japanese is gonna advance, and so they'll advance here and advance along the road here. 
Now this one did enter into a reinforcement stage and so it's going to gain one to that reinforcement so it's a five. And now we're ready for conflict. And so I'm going to do this one first. Now they only have a regular advantage which means that uh, I'm not going to likely lose this unit as long as I defend. I could do a counterattack again but I have to roll a five or a six to only lose one unit. I want to keep one unit here so I'm going to hedge my bets on a defend here so that I can only lose one unit. Now if I roll a one then I will lose that unit completely and let's hope that doesn't happen. But let's see. It went way off the screen here, but it is a six. And uh, so that's great. Uh, although it really doesn't change the result. Above a two is a minus one for me. So we drop down by one. So we're good there. And we're going to roll here. And oh, I'm not sure. I, I don't want to, I don't want to risk it here either. So we're going to play defensive. We're on retreat mode. We need to get to Singapore. So we're going to play a little defensive and see what we get. And it's a four, so that drops it down by one. And so we're down to a four here. And we have allied air support again. And I think we'll go ahead and shoot this one because it, it, I just don't want it to gain another one to six once it moves down. So we're down to a four here. And we're ready to move on to the third turn. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we're ready to withdraw. Now there's no point in, in withdrawing this unit because it'll be reduced by one and then leave the board anyways. So I think I'll keep it there to counterattack. And this one here, I definitely want to reduce by one and retreat, combining with this one, making another five. We're looking pretty good here. Now the Japanese forces are gonna advance here and they would reinforce, but they're at a six, so we're okay. And so for this one here, it is a three to one advantage on, the, on this here. So it's a decisive advantage the Japanese have. And so we're gonna roll there for a counterattack. Might as well go down fighting. It's a four, so we'll reduce this one completely. And then this one will be reduced by one down to a three. But this one here, uh, we wanna be very careful. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Cause if I, I'm gonna defend here, but if I roll a one, then the game's over. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. No one, no one. Oh, it's a six. It's a six, yes. <laughs> so I only lose one unit. Now the reason why the game would be over in that case is if I reduce down to uh, uh, three, because I would have lost two, and then did a withdrawal, I would have had to reduce that die by one, and so I'd only have a two reaching Singapore. And so it wouldn't be enough for a victory. So I managed that, and <laughs> so we're in a good spot. Now there's no air support because we lost our unit in Kuantan. But we advance the turn tracker here and we're moving on to turn four. And so with that, we are going to withdraw. And here we go. We move our third one in to uh, Singapore here and we win the game. <laughs> we don't have to continue with the Japanese advancement. Uh, nothing really happens there. And yes, we won. <laughs> well, we retreated. Yay. <laughs> we got out of there. But we lost a lot of casualties. Yeah, it's, it's very thematic, especially the withdrawal where the, the units are reduced as you're going. It's, it's, it's a thematic war game, uh, but it's also kind of a puzzle game, trying to figure out each map and how it works. And then you have the randomness of the die. It's not overly punishing, but yeah, this game is quick. This game is, you know, five, 10 minutes and, and easy to play, easy to set up. And uh, I'm looking forward to all the maps that they provide. And so there you have it. That was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Battle Card by David Thompson and Nils Johansson. And this is, uh, again, the latest entry from Postmark Games. Check out the Kickstarter link I have in my description. Once again, I'm, I'm really impressed by what David Thompson has brought to the solo community. And, and I look forward to his future games as well. But let me know what you think of the game in the comments. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And I thank everyone who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night. <laughs>